Hi! In our previous tutorial, we have learned how to explode a sprite into its individual pixels. We will now do something a little bit more tricky and revert the process. As a part of that, we will cover how to attract particles to a specific location. We will once again start with a plain particle system. We set the amount of particles higher and add a particles material. There, we remove the gravity and the spread. You can set the emission shape freely this time. We want to make it larger than the sprite. As the texture, we use a plain white pixel. Finally, we convert it into a shader material. We will put a texture uniform for the sprite right here, just like we did last time. When a particle has just spawned, our first challenge is to calculate the sprite pixel it corresponds to. This is where the particle should sample its color from and where it should land after its travel. We will calculate this by transforming the space of the emission shape down to the texture space. However, to get to our destination, we need pixel coordinates, but to sample the color, we need UV coordinates. So, for the color coordinate, we divide by the texture size. We also have to disable this code part that would override our particle's color. Transparent pixels can be discarded by setting their active flag to false, so we don't render them all the time. In this very first frame, they are still active and thus are drawn. Conveniently, they are already transparent. We will now calculate the velocity of the particle, so that it will land at the target pixel after its lifetime of, let's say, one second. We use the initial linear velocity uniform as a speed parameter. We set it to 1 for now. Now, let's jump to the code that is executed in every following frame of the particle's 1 second lifetime. The current lifetime is stored in the Y value of the custom built-in. After a second, we will stop the momentum. When we look at this, the effect already is kind of nice and we can stop there. But there are some inaccuracies. We can see this if we add a sprite as a node below the particles. We did not round the pixel coordinates we sampled from, which results in us aiming up to half a pixel off. But even as we fix it, we can see inaccuracies at the borders, where the pixels moved far and fast. This is because our approach is still not very robust, as small errors in the movement accumulate easily. An easy workaround is to save the destination when we calculate it and snap to it when we stop moving. We use the custom vector Z and W coordinates, which are originally used for the random lifetime and the texture animation. We change some lines and comment some out, so the values are not written or read elsewhere. Now we are still half a pixel off in both the X and Y dimension. So let's subtract half a pixel. Finally, there seems to be something of a first of us eye. This is caused by inaccuracies when sampling from the exact middle of a sprite with an even number of columns. To fix it, we change the 0.5s in the sampling to 0.4999. To make our effect smoother, we can fade the particles in and out. Let's start the fade out at the stop time that we calculated earlier. We multiply the transparency decrease with delta, which is the duration of a frame so that the fade-out is finished by the end of the particle's lifetime. And to create a fade-in, we add a bit of the alpha value at the beginning of the lifetime. For a practical effect we can use in a game, we will add a little animation. First, we add an animation player. In a property track, we start the emission of the particle system. After a little more than half a second, we will start to fade in the sprite below the particle system. We now only have to set the particle system to one shot, so it does not repeat the effect. As always, you can get a demo project from our GitHub. Let us know if you like this tutorial. You can subscribe for more Godot tutorials and devlogs.